interesting, so I'll let cool. uh, him take over. Thanks, Mikey. I'm um, just interested to, to know before we get started who's actually used Charles before. Cool, okay, got a few. Um, uh, good, well, I hope this doesn't sound too much like a sales pitch because I'm not actually affiliated with Charles at all, but I do really love it. Um, it's an app that I use every day. Um, it's yeah, definitely an essential part of my toolkit now. Um, and yeah, as you'll see, uh, it's cool. So what it is, is an HTTP proxy which sits on your computer. Um, so it sits in between your browsers and apps and the internet. So every request that goes out from your browsers goes through Charles. Um, and you can see it, and you can set up rules to manipulate it um, before it's forwarded out to the internet. And then a response comes back, goes to Charles, and again you can view it and manipulate it before it's returned to your browsers. Um, so that lets you actually do some pretty cool things, as I'll show you uh, later. Um, so it's a pretty feature-rich application. Um, I just put this slide in to give you an idea. There's a lot of different things you can do with Charles. Uh, I'm not going to have time to go through all of these today, um, but I've picked out a few favourites, and we're going to be looking at breakpoints, cache busting, um, and local and remote mappings. So first, cache busting. Um, well, caching is really useful for the internet, as you know. Uh, it makes it feel faster than it actually is. Um, but also, as you know, it can be a bit of a pain in the ass when you're developing, because you're always seeing um, outdated assets. So I'm sure you're all really familiar with these um, screenshots here. Often what we do as developers is just disable caching completely. Um, but actually, that's kind of like using a, a sledgehammer to crack a nut. It's a bit of overkill. Um, uh, caching is actually useful because it, 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 it makes the internet feel faster. So when you're developing, you've probably got other tabs open, like you might have MDN or Stack Overflow or something. You don't really want to slow those down. You just want to remove cache uh, for the website that you are working on. So what you can do with Charles is just disable cache for specific domains. Or even further, you can just disable cache for specific file types or um, directories on domains. Um, so then that only um, disables cache for the sites that you're working on, um, but not the other sites that you might want to visit. And so how does it work? Um, well, as we saw before, all the HTTP requests from your computer are going through Charles, and so Charles can manipulate those requests. And it just modifies the headers, um, and what it does is remove a couple of the headers and add some others. Uh, so this is what it does to the request. And then in the second row of this table, uh, we can see that it also modifies the response that comes back from the server. Uh, and the effect that that will have is basically telling the browser that it always needs to re reload this content fresh from the internet. So that was the cache busting tool. Um, the next one is a lot more useful in my opinion. Um, mappings, and these are something that I use a lot. So first, remote mappings. Um, and basically this is just mapping one URL to another. So your browser sends out a request for one file, but you actually send it um, a different file in response. Um, so one example of when this is useful is if you wanted to test out a new version of jQuery on your site, your production server might be loading in version 1.5, you could just set up a mapping from that URL to 1.7. It doesn't matter if it's on a different server. You could set that up, link that directly to the jQuery CDN. Um, so then you can click around on your site and test out the new version of jQuery and see if it works. You don't have to do any server-side work. Um, you, you can run this on your production server just by setting up a mapping on your own local Charles. Um, and so that's, yeah, that's a really um, great thing to be able to do. Uh, also, you could map entire directories or file types, similarly to how we saw with the cache busting tool. Um, so you could map all of your CSS files to a different server or something like that. Uh, local mappings are similar to remote mappings, but instead of going from one URL to another, uh, you go from a URL to a local asset on your computer. Uh, and this is something that we use a lot at Deloitte on a, a recent project we've been doing um, because we were responsible for the front end, the HTML templates and CSS and JavaScript, but an offshore company was doing the server side. 
Um, so we could test the CSS and JavaScript changes in the HTML templates, but then we didn't have access to upload them to the staging server because that was um, a separate company. But what we could do was just set up some mappings in Charles and tell the staging server to load these assets directly off our local machines. So, um, yeah, so we could preview our changes immediately. We didn't have to upload them. Um, just click around on the website and there they would be. Um, so now I'm going to give you uh, an example of how you could set up some local mappings to do what I was just explaining. Uh, this is our website. Um, and if you visited this and then you had Charles uh, running, when you open Charles, you would see, um, this is what you would see. This is the standard um, window for Charles. The top half shows all the HTTP requests that have gone out. It looks a little bit like the network tab in uh, Chrome's um, developer tools or Firebug. Um, and then the bottom half shows some more details about those each individual request. Um, so what we want to do in this example is um, set up a local mapping. And we can see in the top half that all of the CSS and JavaScript files are coming out of a directory um, called assets. So let's just set up a mapping for the entire assets folder to load it from our uh, local uh, computer. And then when we make changes to the CSS or JavaScript, we can preview them on the live site. So to do that, we just double click on one, oh, sorry, right click on one of these files, and then we can select map local. Uh, that brings up a window like this, uh, where we can uh, customise which location we want to map from. And the default is the file that we clicked on. Uh, but in this case, let's just change that part uh, so that it loads all of the um, anything from the assets folder. So we can just use a wildcard there. And then we need to select the local directory that we want to load the files from. Um, so. Now, if we were to go and uh, reload the Deloitte digital page and look at it in Charles, we can see here that it's been mapped, uh, that CSS file has been mapped to a local file. So if we looked at that in the browser, this is what the site looked like before, and then after we've set up the mapping, we can see our mapping. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's not just on the one page, but if we click around on the website, that'll flow through to all the other pages. Uh, so that's local and remote mappings. The other feature that I want to look at today is breakpoints. Um, and these are really useful for debugging form requests and Ajax requests. Uh, they let you specify a URL um, or yeah, any location that you want to that you want to break on. And then when that URL gets requested, uh, the breakpoint is triggered. Uh, so Charles, Charles will open up and let you view that request, and then if there's something about it you want to change. You can change it before it gets sent, or you can also change the response before that comes in. Um, so this could be really useful for front-end devs. If you think there's a bug on the server side, but you don't have access to modify that code, you can just modify the re uh, response with a breakpoint, and then test out if that will result in a defect. Um, so for an example of this, we can set up a breakpoint on the uh, find or search function of meetup.com. So let's search for HTML on this search page. Um, yeah, so we would type HTML in there and hit search. And then this is what the results page looks like. It hasn't found anything. So if we thought there was a bug there, we might set up a breakpoint in Charles to look into it a bit further. So we'd flip over to the Charles window. And we'd see the request there, which goes out to find slash keyword, uh, question mark, keywords equals HTML. And again, we'd right click on it. And then this time, instead of map local, we can just select breakpoints. And after we click that, it'll create a breakpoint on that URL. Um, but if we want to just check what breakpoint it's created exactly, we can go up to the proxy menu and then down to breakpoints. And this will give us a list of the different breakpoints that have been set up. So if we double click on that one, um, it'll give us a window similar, uh, which is quite similar to what we used for setting up the mapping before. Um, so you can see that this breakpoint is only going to trigger on a specific query, but we can just delete that query so it'll trigger on any request to the find part. Uh, so let's 
So we just empty that field. And so now, if we go back to the website and hit search again, uh, that should trigger the breakpoint. <coughs> so when we do that, uh, Charles will automatically open up to the front. And this is what the uh, request view of a breakpoint looks like. So at the moment, the query string tab is selected down the bottom. So we can see details of uh, all the data that's being sent out in the query string. Uh, also, you can see the header, uh, the headers and modify them, um, form data, um, anything about it really. So in this example, let's change the um, parameter keywords. We'll change that value from HTML to web. So we can just double click on it and then type in the new value. And when we're happy, we can hit execute down the bottom. So when we hit execute, that modifies the uh, request and forwards it out to the internet. Then when the response comes back in, this window opens up. And this is also part of the breakpoint, but it's the response rather than the request. And it's very similar. We can look through all the details of it. Uh, and we can also edit it if we want to. But in this case, I'm just going to let it go through. So I'll just hit execute. And then uh, if we would go back to the browser, this time when we search for HTML, it actually shows some results there. So that's a pretty basic example of breakpoints because we were just editing a query string parameter. But you could use it to edit headers or add or remove other parameters um, and also edit, uh, modifying the response. So that can be quite useful. Um, yeah, so that's Charles. Oh, well, that's some of the features of Charles. There's a lot more to it. But uh, those are my favorite features. Um, and you, you might be wondering about how to get it. Well, it's, um, there is a free trial, uh, which is unlimited in length. Um, and it just shows some annoying pop-ups every now and then. Um, but I love the apps so I recommend buying. It's only like $50 for an individual license. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can you like uh, program it so that like it does it automatically, like rather than you having to go and type in to like you know replace HTML with web? Can you set it up to automatically find that query and replace with something else? Yeah, it does have an advanced uh, setting where you can um, set up locations of regular expressions and set up what rules you want to apply to it. Um, and it also has a web interface, so you can turn on the different features and change them through a website. So that would actually let you, um, you could use that as an API and write your own app that, um, that interacts with Charles. So, yeah. Why is it called Charles? <laughs> um, I don't know. Yeah, and I don't know why it has that jug as a logo. <laughs> I know it comes from, it was built in New Zealand. Um, <laughs> 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 what does that yeah, explain? explain? <laughs> <laughs> Any uh, more questions? Oh, we'll leave it at that. Thank Thanks. you very much.